Are you one of those people that tries to achieve perfectionism every single time you paint? Well, in today's video, I'm gonna show you how a simple tool such as this can help you really improve your painting style. Coming up. Hi again there guys, I'm here from Paint and Pino giving you some top tips for all things art and design and in today's video we're going to show you how to really loosen up your painting style. I used to be a perfectionist painter and I'd spend months and months trying to achieve that perfectionism and actually get really frustrated in the process. So what I'm going to show you today is how just literally setting yourself just a, a limited time is really going to help you speed up those brush strokes and create something far more impressionistic. So for today's topic I'm actually looking back through some old photographs. I came across some old pictures when I was traveling around the world uh, and I was lucky enough to go to Monument Valley in the United States and actually witness how the Navajo live. It was a remarkable experience but that was about 13 years ago. So now the vision's a little bit hazy. Yes I've got my photographs to look at. I've got my old grainy videos but what I'm going to try and achieve today is the fact that that memory is slightly hazy so it's really going to help speed up the process and give me a little bit more of an impressionist style to that painting. So here's a step-by-step -step video guys on how to do that coming right up. So the brushes are key when it comes to loosening up our style. We don't want to have any fine detail brushes in our repertoire. So here I've gone with two large brushes, the smallest being the 10 mil round head brush, which is still a large brush, and then the 35 mil artist brush. Colors wise, we've gone with the white and the black, the warm yellow, the cool blue, and the warm red. And of course, the last thing that we need is the clock. So we're gonna stick 10 minutes in the corner. I reckon we're gonna smash that. So I've already pre-primed the canvas. So I'm just going to give it one extra top coat. The whole point of working in a very impressionist style is that we want it to be nice and loose and wet. So it's a really warm day today. So we just want to keep that paint nice and, and loose. So I'm going straight on with a 35mm painter's brush. Just putting in the horizon line. Here you want to work as quickly as you can. That's the only way you're going to really get that gorgeous impressionist effect. So lots of um, marks which you want to try and keep uh, not, not too repetitive. Keep twisting that wrist, moving the brush around. So I've just gone on with the one tertiary brown colour at the moment, which um, obviously we're going to have varieties of different tertiary colours throughout this painting, but it wants to be a nice, subtle, almost beige effect. Let's load up the brush, a little bit darker areas. A lot of people ask, um, you know, in terms of what style do you prefer to paint in? And I used to be a really, really detailed painter. I'd spend hours, if not months, on doing little small paintings. And you can get quite frustrated because you're trying to achieve perfectionism. You know, you cannot achieve perfectionism really this day and age with a paintbrush. We don't need to, that's what we have cameras for. So there's something really quite relaxing and, and quite beneficial from working this way you know an impressionist style is literally that interpretation of your painting you know this is a painting for me that this this was a place that I visited eight years ago now and you know memory's a little bit hazier perhaps so you're almost reflecting that hazy uh, memory effect through your painting so I've just added a little bit more of the the primer paint rather than using white acrylic because it's going to keep it looser so I can keep moving that paint around. And again, I'm just using the same brush all the way through this. A little bit of a highlight here with the white, just to have a nice contrast. Okay, we keep blending this in with the, with the white primer. It's almost like a nice subtle tertiary color. We're gonna add some depth into the painting later on, but this is just layering up at this point. So we're just working on the background at this stage. All right, we're now gonna move on to the, uh, the smaller round uh, size 10 brush so that uh, we can start to work on that detail. So just adding a little bit more blue into the tertiary color, and then we're gonna start putting in the monoliths. So this is the rock formations. And again, you don't want to be too perfect with the shapes, almost sketching. You're just giving a little hint as to where these shapes might be. I'm not worried about the outline at this stage. So I'm gonna have a a focal point of three main monoliths in the middle. I'm 
and again it's layers so this is simply the background layer at this stage I'm almost just sketching the outline of these rocks so I can see where I want them to go I'm going to take them a little bit higher so it's a little bit more contrast in terms of the shape and the composition I think this fella is going to be my, my feature monolith And then just whilst we've got that darker colour, I'm just going a little bit more depth now into the background. I know my memory of Monument Valley was obviously just seeing these incredible rock formations everywhere, but I don't want to overpower my painting, so I'm just going to give suggestions of rocks in the background, rather than doing loads and loads of different monoliths, which I think would distract from the actual feature. Three monoliths in the middle. Alright, so we're just going to layer up a little bit more depth now. So once I've got that darker tertiary brown on my brush, I'm just going to work some of that almost like shadow coming from the rocks that perhaps are off in the distance from the, the actual painting that you can't see, just suggesting that sort of sense of being. So now we're just going to layer some of that texture onto the monoliths themselves. So we've gone quite dark this time. I have put a little tiny touch of black into this tertiary colour just to give it real good contrast. You want to be careful that you don't go too extreme with that contrast because you still want to give that hazy sense, that foggy sense of a painting so it really gives that impressionist look. You know, ideally I want to try and achieve this whole painting in around 10 minutes um, just because if you give yourself a time restriction it then means that you have to keep the pace, you have to keep the, the paintbrush moving, uh, you know, you'll find that the hardest thing as an artist is deciding when to actually stop in a painting because you can almost overwork it and the amount of times in the past that I've, I've just gone too far with the painting and I always feel like I've spoilt it. So I think it's quite a good fun way of painting if you literally set a clock and say right I've got to get this painting done in this time and it just takes away that pressure of perfectionism within your painting. I'm just going to keep on working this sort of depth in the shadow areas to, to these rock formations. I think it's always good as well to get an idea of where the light is coming from. So for me the light contrast is coming from the right hand side, that's where the lighter areas are going to be. So naturally your shadow is going to be on the left. So we're just going to keep extending these sh the shadow lines out so that that left hand side is obviously going to be the darker side of the rock. Okay, let's add a little bit more texture towards the top. The other thing as well with impressionist painting is there is a fine line between being looser with your style and actually being messy. You know, you still want to achieve, uh, you know, not naturalistic look, but a look that you're content with where, you know, there is only so much texture I can work with this before you know, it starts to feel like the object. So what I mean by that is if I was too loose with my paintbrush, so the one in the middle at the moment obviously needs a lot of work on. I'm just adding a little bit more of that light tone to the right hand side of this monolith but you've got to find that balance between what is a lovely loose uh, sort of mark painting and what is just rather abstract. So I don't want this to look abstract but I do want it to have that loose feel so it is a fine balance you know there's obviously got to be an element of detail but I also want to have it so that you can see those individual brush marks as well. Just got a little bit more white on this paintbrush here. Just oh, It does dry so quickly in this heat. It's about 38 degrees today here in Perth, so I'm actually working outside because the studio is too hot. So just whilst I've got that white on my brush, I'm just going to add a hint of that yellow and put it through the sky now just to give it a nice dusky contrast. You know, this is dry already. And this was only started, what, six minutes ago? So yeah, pretty, pretty warm day today. Just 
going to be careful that you're not actually ordinarily add work in layers so I don't want to go over the top of that monolith so I'm just being careful but it's because it is it's drying so quickly I just want to add a little bit more depth to the sky it's going to work back over the top of that monolith so I don't lose that foreground you obviously don't want to have any clouds or anything moving on top of it and there we go pretty happy with that an impressionist painting of Monument Valley so there you have it guys, hope you've enjoyed today's video on how just these two larger brushes can really help to speed up and loosen up your style of painting. If you have enjoyed the video then please do hit that like button just below as it really does help our channel and if you'd like to see some more weekly top tips just like this one then do hit that subscription button just below as it really does help our channel. Alrighty guys, we'll see you next time, happy painting. Mm -hmm.